In this video, I wanna share the three traits that will get you to recovery very fast. Now, these were traits, some of them were things that I had to develop over the recovery journey and some that I had actually innately. And as I'm guiding people through the recovery journey, what I find are these common traits. This goes a little bit beyond of just understanding the mechanics of anxiety and learning how to respond. These are more inner qualities about you that will help you go through the recovery journey. This is something that I feel everyone needs to cultivate. This isn't some things that some people can just do without and recover and some people will need for recovery. I genuinely feel this is something everybody needs for the recovery journey. So I really want to break down these three trades so that you can focus on going back to living as quickly as possible. So let's get started. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna talk too much about my own recovery journey. If you're someone who's new to the channel or someone who doesn't know about my story and wants to know more, I'll go ahead and post a link to a video that I created up here. It was a video I made a while back. Um, I'm thoroughly proud of it. I even interviewed my parents. They talk about how it was for me and my recovery journey. What were some of the things that I was struggling with and really just gives you a good idea of how the recovery journey looks like and even what I'm up to nowadays. And besides that, if you also wanna understand how does recovery look like, you might have these traits, but you're like, I don't know what to do to begin my recovery journey. I'll put a link down below to a free ebook that really breaks down step by step. It's a guide showing you how to go through the recovery process. Now, that being said, one of the best traits I had, I was actually very fortunate for having this trait. This wasn't something I developed, it was just something I always believed in, which was the the fact that I never identified with my anxiety. Honestly, I never said I'm an anxious person or I can't do something because of my anxiety. Because the truth was is that I was never really an anxious person growing up. What happened to me was, like many people, I had a panic attack and I just spiraled after that. I started getting more panic attacks, more physical symptoms, and I felt like what was happening was happening to me. And it was very frustrating for me because I remember going to doctors and being like, can we figure out what's wrong so I can just go back to living? And they're like, nothing's wrong, you're fine. And I'm like, ah, you know, like I really just wanna get better and get out of it. And that's when I started learning the idea of sensitization, why your nervous system is really sensitive, and because of that, that's why you're experiencing intense symptoms. But one of the biggest things I had was I never made anxiety an identity. Now, that came with some caveats. The first thing was that because I never identified with being anxious, my biggest roadblock was I never believed what I was experiencing was anxiety. Because I never identified with being anxious, I thought there was something physically wrong. So one of my biggest hurdles was the fact that I just didn't believe it was anxiety because I never identified with being an anxious person. But what I actually find as I'm guiding people to the recovery journey is most people don't fall in that category. Most of the people that I've helped overcome, they actually fall into the second category, which is they're too identified with their anxiety. They're too identified with the fact of this is gonna be me forever, this is my life. I'm just an anxious person. Sean is unique because he didn't struggle for this long and I've struggled for this long and they're always trying to find ways for why they're unique. And the truth is, is that as special and as unique as you are, you are not a special snowflake when it comes to anxiety, okay? The anxiety system that we all have is a fight or flight response. It's a nervous system uh, response. Every mammal has it, every person has it. There's no such thing as, there's some people that are just inherently more anxious than not. The truth is, is that there's just some people that have developed behaviors that keep their anxiety alive. And here's the biggest problem with making anxiety an identity. Okay, this goes a little bit beyond anxiety, but if you're ever identified with something, anything, this doesn't even have to be anxiety related, your ego will try to protect it. And anytime your ego will protect it, well, when you try to break through that limitation, your ego is gonna bring you back down. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna be going through the recovery journey, and if you're identified with being an anxious person, well, anytime you have a hiccup, anytime you have a setback, anytime you have a minor change in your recovery process, your ego is gonna bring you back down and say, look, you're an anxious person. This is why this is happening, because you're just different. And the truth is that the anxiety recovery journey, it takes time, it takes perseverance, and if you're gonna get thrown off by every hiccup, it's not gonna work. And the biggest thing is this, okay? 
Anytime you are identified with something, it becomes a limitation. So if you're identified with being an anxious person, that automatically limits you to a certain degree. You will never break through that. So one of the biggest things you can do right now is reshifting your mindset, recognizing that you are not an anxious person. These anxious sensations are happening to you and the key to your recovery is within you. The only thing that happened was you didn't know how to respond or you might not know exactly what the steps are. You don't know what behavior patterns are keeping alive. Once you fix those or once you at least identify them, wouldn't you fix them on your own? If the keys to recovery are in your hands, wouldn't you wanna focus on recovery and just get better? But when you're identified with being an anxious person, well then what happens is you'll end up sabotaging your own recovery. Anytime you make a little bit of progress and then you have a little bit of a hiccup, you will validate the fact that, hey, I'm just an anxious person. So the biggest thing you can do is really reshifting that. And if you really wanna know more, what I would highly recommend is check out some success stories on the channel. There are people that are just like you. They're no different than you. When they came to me, they were struggling with the exact same thing you were struggling with. Now they're back to living and now they're enjoying themselves. And you know what? the interesting thing about all this when you ask them hey is recovery possible and you hear me say this in the videos they end up saying Sean if I can recover anyone can recover why because the truth is is that anxiety isn't an identity and we live in a society where we're just very identity focused you are this person you are this nationality you are this you know religion you're this kind of person you're this personality trait you're this introvert you're that extrovert these are all man-made concepts that we've just made up in our head the truth is you're none of those things yeah and anytime if you want to have an identity this is not just for anxiety recognize that anytime you identify with something you're automatically putting a limitation see identities have a function of helping you recognize where you are in this world and what your place is however that can turn into a prison in itself what's something that is designed to help build structure for you can end up becoming a prison and what I find with a lot of anxiety sufferers is, you know, they're doing things well, they're responding, but anytime they have a hiccup, they go into this negative self-talk and this negative mindset of, oh man, I'm never gonna get out of this. And they're looking for ways to validate that. And that's because deep down, they're still identified with being an anxious person. So don't make that mistake. This was one quality that I naturally had, which was really good. And I think a lot of it was just because I always felt like wanting to live a full and free life and I was so committed to that, that when anxiety limited me, I felt like this was happening to me. It wasn't my own doing. Now, the second trait that I had to develop, this was something I had to develop. This wasn't something that was innate in me. One of the things I had to develop was that I had to consciously let go of this fight that I was having with anxiety and make the commitment that life was going to be more important than my anxiety. See, I always prided myself in working really hard and I felt like we were kind of in a culture where if you wanna get something, work hard at it. And the reason why you're not getting something is because you're not working hard enough at it. And so I always prided myself in working really hard and getting what I want and being resilient and never giving up. And you might be even seeing these motivational videos of people saying, you gotta need it better than anyone else. You need it more than anyone else. But here's the problem. This really goes against anxiety recovery. And I use that same approach of trying to be resilient and push through and just push through and just try harder and never give up in my recovery journey and it never worked. I, I kept trying to find ways to fight my symptoms. I wouldn't give up the fight because I felt like if I was giving up the fight, I was giving up on myself. And the truth was is that my recovery journey started when I realized that actually I was in this hamster wheel where every time I was fighting, I wasn't getting better. In fact, every time I was fighting with the symptoms, fearing the symptoms, trying to fix the symptoms, when I was focusing on the symptoms, when I was getting frustrated by the symptoms, those are the five Fs, right? What I ended up doing was I ended up perpetuating the cycle and the cycle actually was going deeper and deeper. I was getting worse because of that. So then my recovery journey started when I recognized that what I'm doing is not working. And at that time, it felt like I was hitting rock bottom because I was finally admitting defeat. I was like, I don't know what to do to make this go away. I tried everything every supplement under the sun, every technique. I went to every alternative doctor I could think of. None of it worked. I can't do anything about this. And at, at first I thought I was, I was losing the game. But ironically, that's when my recovery journey started. That's when, when I hit rock bottom, I always say that's actually when my recovery journey started. And what I decided to do consciously was recognize I was gonna let go of the fight. 
I wasn't going to try to fix this. I was trying to fix this and then going back to living and I say, look, I clearly can't fix this. So I'm just going to make my life more important than my anxiety symptoms. And ironically, that was the trait that actually pulled me out. What I started doing was every time I started experiencing the symptoms, I let it be. I didn't fight it. This is where I talk about responding correctly, right? This is where I talk about responding appropriately to the response, not focusing or measuring your progress based on your feelings, but measuring it based on your response. And again, like I say, if you want to know more, there's an ebook that breaks that down too. But that being said, that's when my recovery journey started. That's when I started realizing, hey, wait, if I just don't fight these symptoms, these things actually go away on their own. I always had this notion that, no, I had to do something to make it go away. But actually, if I just leave it and don't fix it and just have trust and just have faith that, look, it's fine. You don't need to focus on it. In fact, me focusing on it is causing more problems. So it's cool. Just let it be there. How long is it going to be there? As long as it needs, it's fine. And I'm just going to focus on other things. And what happened was is that when I focus on other things that I look back and I'm like, oh, it went away, right? This didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen immediately in a day. This took time, right? This took, you know, weeks, months sometimes, you know, where I started seeing these things. But then what ended up happening was other things became more important. See, the thing is, is that a lot of people think with anxiety recovery, the goal is recovery, right? The prize is recovery. The prize is not recovery, yeah? The prize is life, the opportunity that you get to live life. But what happens is a lot of people become so focused on recovery that nothing is more important than recovery. Like recovery is the most important thing. And that's kind of true and that's kind of not true. That is true where you really need to focus on helping yourself and getting yourself better before you decide to help other people. But at the same time, if your recovery goal is I want these symptoms to go away and that trumps every other aspect of your life, well then it's never going to work. A lot of recovery is there's going to be a stage in the recovery game where other things are just going to need to be more important than your symptoms and symptoms might pop up, but you can't go back into the spiral mode of trying to figure it out. You have to be like, okay, well, the symptoms are there. That's fine. It popped up. It hasn't been there in a while. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to analyze it. It went away last time. I'm just going to focus on what I need to get done because what I need to get done is more important. I got this to do that to do. I had this deadline to hit and those things are more important than how I'm feeling. And what happens in the process is that's towards more of the later stage where what we you have something that we call full acceptance or total acceptance where you start recognizing that I don't need to do anything about this, right? And so that's the second thing I really developed on my recovery journey. Now, the third thing I had to do was something I also had to develop, and it has a lot to do with step number two, which was giving up the fight, which was if I'm giving up the fight, I also need to give up this time limit that I have for recovery. A lot of times anxiety recovery is this weird conundrum. Ironically, the people that recover the fastest are the ones that don't set a time limit. I always find people that have a time limit never hit it. I've never had anybody who's had a time limit hit it because what happens is anytime they're putting themselves in a time limit, they're sensitizing their nervous system. They're putting pressure on their nervous system and recovery is about letting go. It's about taking off the pressure. And so one of the biggest things I had to do was recognize, hey, look, you need to let go. And it's really interesting because I remember my dad telling me, he was like, you know, I recognize this was something different, Sean, that you were going through because you were so committed on getting this fixed as quickly as possible. Right? He was like, you know, when you used to get sick as a kid, you know, you didn't try to rush the process. But with this, you were really trying to rush the process. And I think there's two answers for that. I think number one, these feelings were so uncomfortable that I wanted to rush through it because I just didn't want to feel them. That was part of the resistance. And second of all, I think I just wanted to do so many other things in my life that I felt like anxiety was a hindrance. And I had the, I had the mentality that if I did something, maybe I could expedite this faster. Okay, if this is going to take two weeks, maybe I can do something that would bring it down to a week. But what that ended up actually doing is what it would do is that it would sabotage my recovery. It would actually extend the process because I would kept thinking, oh, this is going to slow down my recovery. Oh, what does this mean? Where am I at on the recovery journey? And I was measuring my progress too much on this timeline. And so a huge part for me was just letting go of the timeline. And ironically, once I started letting go of the timeline, that's when I started seeing progress. And I always would ask myself, how much longer is this going to take? How long is a recovery journey? And I would just tell myself as long as it takes, who cares? The best thing you can do right now is just try to enjoy the process because really what is your homework during the recovery journey, which is letting the symptoms be there and living life 
the best you can right now. It's not a big deal. That's really your homework, right? And again, the goal isn't recovery. That's not the prize, right? You have to understand as a coach, what I have to do, see when I'm talking about anxiety recovery, why am I talking so much about recovery? One of the things that I have to do is that I have to meet you where you're at. And all you care about is getting better, right? All you care about is getting better and going back to living. How do I know this? Because I was the exact same. So as I'm guiding people, I have to meet you where you're at. But what people don't realize that it's not recovery that's the prize. Yes, the symptoms go away, you go back to living. But that's not actually the prize. The prize is the skill sets you develop. The prize is being able to live life where you're not limited anymore. People think the prize is the symptoms going away. Yes, they go away. But life doesn't change after that. You're still gonna have other stressors. It might not be anxiety, it might be something else, right? And I'm telling you, as people get better, their problems change. They get better quality problems. So the goal is not to not have problems. The pro the pro that's actually the problem, if anything. The thing that you wanna do is you wanna enjoy life in the process. The process is the gift. The growth is the gift. Living life is the gift. But this doesn't work as a timeline, right? This isn't like you hit a finish line and then you get a prize at the end or a cookie or something. This is not recovery. Recovery is the journey. This is the process. And if you can just learn to enjoy the moment, well, then that will bring you more present and that will naturally help with your anxiety recovery process, right? Because anxiety recovery is you're always escaping something, escaping something. But if you're enjoying the moment for what it is, well, you're not fighting anything and your nervous system has a chance to finally rest and relax. So anyways, I hope this video helps. These videos are getting a little bit more nuanced, I know. I hope it's helping. I've been getting some great feedback. Uh, we've been getting insane results in the mentorship, and we really focus a lot more on the basics of recovery and really guiding people step by step. These videos are a little bit more general, and so I try to keep it as general in the sense that I want it to impact as many people as possible, but you might need different help depending on different levels that you're at in the recovery journey, right? And this is a game, and, during, and, and there's different levels to this recovery game right and depending on the recovery level that you're at you might need different advice so what i always recommend like i always say is finding a guide someone that can help you through the journey really in a weird way expedite this process right but at the same time not putting a time limit on it right you can be not putting a time limit on it and that will help with your recovery journey but at the same time if you can avoid common mistakes that a lot of people make by being around somebody that you trust that can guide you through the process, well, that's a win-win too, right? So like I say, find somebody that can guide you through the process. If you want that to be me, there's a link down below um, for application. Uh, you know, we don't let just anybody in the mentorship. We really wanna make sure that it's something that we can help with, that something that you're committed to doing. Yeah, you're not just dabbling into these videos or anything like that. You're actually committed to recovery because um, it's a it's a process, right? And and we spend a lot of time with the clients. That's really where I spend majority of my time, um, help helping support my coaches to make sure that you know they're helping the clients. You know, also helping out the clients as well. And so because of that, we really want to work with people that are committed. We don't want people that just quit after you know a, a day or so. You know, we want people that are long term focused. So we just want to make sure that this is a right fit for you and this is a right fit for us uh, because it's kind of like this relationship that we have through the recovery journey. And again, the goal is to, you know, once you get better, becoming your own guide in that process. So the link is down below. I hope this video helps. I'll see you in the next one.